What do you get when six generations of a family put their heart and soul into their farmland and produce the world's best potatoes? The answer, lots of flavor on Food Country. At first glance, this just looks like a farmhouse and a couple of barns and a few fields, but really what we have here is the last of a dying breed because this is a family farm. But this family farm is doing a lot more than just surviving. This family farm is thriving. Prince Edward Island is world renowned for the bounty of our fertile red soil. The whole province is basically one big giant farm and here, potatoes are king. This land has been farmed by the Rose family for six generations, Robert and Elora, their sons Boyd and Miles, and now the next generation, Jory. They love this farm, but things have changed. So what's, what is it like these days being a part of a big farm like this? How do you keep it going? It's quite a change. Uh, when my dad was here, he had about 10 acres of potatoes, about 10 cows, 20 sheep, 100 hens, 8 or 10 pigs, and uh, that was it. If one thing didn't pay, maybe something else did. Sure. That's the way it worked. And every year was a little bit different. Yeah. And yeah. You, you flash forward to today, and what's it like now? Well, it's like I said, it's a lot more work with your head and, and not so much with your back, you know. I remember my mother when she was probably 50, up at the barn loft trying to level hay, you know, they'd put this big pitch of hay in on a fork and they'd drop it and you had to try to get it leveled down before the next one came in. And she'd be up there with the fork and I've seen her crying. I've seen her crying. And that's what it's like today. Everybody's pitching in, basically. You don't, you don't just hang out on a family farm. Everybody's a part of it. So how do you sort of divvy up the work? How do you divide it up? Who does what? Who's responsible for what on the farm? Each, each one of them has their job. <clears throat> it just kind of happened over time, I guess, you know. It uh, wasn't something we sat down and said, I'm going to do this, you do that. It was just, you know, Miles is really good at fixing stuff, little repair jobs and that type of stuff, and I, I hate that type of stuff. You know, <laughs> I'd rather go spray the crop or dig the crop or plant it or something. Miles works in the warehouse when we're harvesting. I run one of the harvesters. And so it's just going to evolve. Miles looks totally after them. The milk business uh, so it, it's equal shared but just going to evolve I guess yeah. he's environmental too he does the soil crop yeah, I do testing. fertility on all the varieties that we grow we hope to have the field and the soil as good when we're done of it as it was when we started sure that's my goal anyway or better mm -hmm. or better you can either build mine or maintain your field and we hope to we hope to build it or at least maintain it for the next generation. Mm -hmm. As Boyd and I head out into the field, it occurs to me that one of the defining features of this farm is not the land itself, but that Boyd's kids actually want to stay on this land. And I can see why. So you're growing three different types of potatoes. Yes, yeah, we actually have a fourth, but we don't have it here with us. And is it basic? It's the same process, really? It's pretty much the same process. Fertility is different on some than others. They need different nutrients to grow, and some are longer season and shorter season. But, but the, the process is pretty much the same. You plant seed, and you tend to them, and they grow. So what types are we looking at, and where are they heading? Well, this is a gold rush variety here. It's, it's a russet-type variety. It sure. has a russeted skin, and it's a white flesh, even though it's called gold rush. Uh, it's pretty multi-purpose. Uh, this is a great fresh pack, consumer pack, uh, and food service. The bigger stuff will be going to food service. 
French fries? Uh, can, can be, but uh, not much. Not The processors wouldn't use this variety no. for a French fry, no. Oh, they wouldn't, okay. No, they wouldn't use this one. It's more of a fresh market one. The reds, again, are a consumer pack, uh, great in red solids, uh, you know, more of a waxy texture to them, nice white uh, sure. flesh. These are a lower starch potato. These are good for boiling, yeah, that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. And here you can sell the small ones too. Yeah, the red, those are popular. Small reds are, they're hard to, hard to get a lot of them to get the, a, a big yield of them, but they are worth a fair bit of money. Nice not to have to throw out half your crop. Oh yeah, though. for sure, yeah. yeah. And then? The round whites are, are a good boiling potato. You can, uh, they keep their form good, so the jackets will just crack open on them slightly and they're, they're really good uh, for boiling in their jacket and uh, make good mashed potatoes too if you want. But, sure. Yeah. So why go through all the trouble of growing three different potatoes? Why not just grow one of these? Well, we're trying to meet our customers' demands and, and spread our risk around as well. You know, some years reds might not do so well where Gold Rush will do better and brown whites will do medium. So you spread your risk a little, but it's all about growing what the consumer wants. Sure. Uh, and they want, you know, they want a variety. So that's what we're trying to, trying to grow for them. Gentlemen, thanks for letting me play in the dirt with you today. It's been a pleasure, Michael. It's been fun, huh? And, and you know, I'm going home with, with a real appreciation for what it takes to be a family farmer today. For that, thank you. Thank you very much for your time, too. Good to be here. And now, I get to do my part. Three different potatoes to cook. When I look at this picture, it reminds me of where I grew up. Uh, it reminds me of a lot of hard work that was done by my mom and dad and uh, a little bit of work that was done sort of reluctantly by myself when I couldn't get out of it. But it was a good life and I thank God for it. <laughs>